What's up you guys? It's Scott from Fly Rides. We're back with another Life on an E-Bike video. I gotta say, I really love doing these videos, so I hope you guys are enjoying watching them. They have been uh, very, very fun, mostly because I get to ride a ton of different e-bikes and no one can say anything about it. This week I am riding the Gazelle City Zen T10 Speed, a 28 mile per hour commuting beast. I really enjoyed this bike. This bike is sex, this bike is bay, this bike is life, this bike is God. In all seriousness, I have never ridden a bike where as many people were coming up to me uh, saying what a nice looking bike it was, then saying, oh my gosh, that's an e-bike. I thought e-bikes looked kind of dumb and bulky. Uh, and I would say, no, this is an e-bike now. They're sleek and sexy. And that is all thanks to the design team at Gazelle over in jolly old Amsterdam. <laughs> That's what they call it, right? It's sleek, it looks professional, it looks like something you want to arrive on, but there are a lot of things that separate this bike from a lot of other commuters. Let's break into it a little bit, you guys, and watch me ride the Gazelle Citizen T10 Speed. Do you like our new roommate? Yeah, yeah, That's worse. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what you're getting on this bike. Uh, Drivetrain wise, you have got a Shimano Dior derailleur offering 10 speeds, an 11 to 36 tooth cassette in the back. You are also getting Shimano hydraulic disc brakes on this on 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear. Great stopping power on those. The motor on this is going to be the Bosch Performance Line Speed Motor, taking you up to 28 miles per hour. This is going to be the Gen 2, so it's offering 63 newton meters of torque. For most city commuters, I think that's going to be plenty. You're getting a rear rack with integrated lights, front and rear. They actually do work pretty well, those lights. Sometimes manufacturers will kind of chintz out. That's one thing I love about this bike is they gave you really good components where it counts. One place that that is very noticeable is in the Ergon grips. They give you some really nice grips on this bike. It's so easy for manufacturers just to give you crap <laughs> grips. But that's really important to have like a nice you know, cockpit that you feel comfortable handling. Speaking of the cockpit, you have a Bosch Purion display on this bike. Where this bike really shines and outperforms other bikes in the same price range and in this type of bike is just the extra features. So for instance, you're getting aluminum fenders as opposed to some plastic fenders that some people kind of just will throw on there. You are also getting a power tube 500 watt hour battery. That's not different than a lot of companies, but it's the way that it's integrated is just really nice. Gazelle, uh, they put their own kind of cover on it so it looks, um, customized and well, you know, just designed specifically for this bike. It also does this very cool thing where when you put the key in, it kind of like slowly comes up, like it doesn't, you don't just like pop it out. Kind of just makes it feel like the Batmobile or something. Finally, I can be a superhero, what I've always wanted. What'd you call that bike the other day? It's a superhero bike. It's a superhero bike. Remember when I said that in this video? It was not planned. You guys are also going to get an AXA Defender Cafe Lock on the rear wheel. You guys know if you've seen my videos how obsessed I am with a Cafe Lock. I can't get over them, man. I think they're so great. Um, one thing on this bike that I did want to point out, you actually cannot leave uh, that Cafe Lock unlocked. Um, basically, that key is going to stay in there. Uh, Gazelle, I would love it to be corrected if this is incorrect. I could not find a way to get the key out. I do believe you have to lock the Cafe Lock. So the benefit of this is it shows that Gazelle is committed to your bike security and they want you using that. Uh, and it does pair, uh, that, that key is the same lock that goes to the battery compartment as well. But what it, you know, kind of the drawback on that is that essentially you have to bring that key with you. Otherwise, you're risking someone walking away with your battery. Um, what I would love to see, I think, would just be like, just include a little carabiner for me or something like that so that I can quickly attach it to my key ring. I did have a couple times that I was uh, searching for the key a little bit longer than I wanted to be because I had put it in a pocket I don't normally use. So it's kind of a double-edged sword with it because it is forcing you to use that cafe lock, a little bit of extra security for you. Um, but if you forget to use the cafe lock, I guess just don't forget to use it. <laughs> we got a long day ahead of us, YouTube. 
It's gonna be a long one today, heading in to fly rides right now for work. Then I got class and then back here, I should be back. Oh no, then I'm going to a show. It's gonna have me back here at like 11.30, 12. Right now it's 10.20. That's like, uh, and I've started earlier already. So, all right, it's gonna be a long one, guys. Let's see how it goes on the gazelle. Almost done with work for the day, guys. And then I'm taking you to a show. It's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. On the gazelle. Heck, is back from vacation. Hey, I'm back. Do you have anything to say to the people? People, ride your bikes. My eyes look so dead. <laughs> It is definitely more of a traditional commuter. Uh, by that I mean it's not gonna be like an e-bike commuter with fatter tires. It's 42C tires on there. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm used to commuting with smaller tires, so for me it was great, but just know it is 42C as opposed to some of the plus size options out there. Uh, last thing I wanted to point out that's really cool and it keeps costs down while giving you some comfort is the way they do their suspension fork. They do the same thing on the Gazelle Arroyo. It's uh, pretty common with Gazelle bikes, but it's just 30 millimeters of travel right on top of the fork there. So you get that uh, comfort without kind of the expensive and heavy weight uh, that comes along with a front suspension fork. No parking, no parking, no parking, no parking, no parking, no parking. Okay. No parking, no parking, no parking, no parking, no parking, no parking, no parking. No parking. Oh, right. I'm on a bike. There's got to be a few people who wonder if I'm wearing this helmet just because I fall a lot, like down escalators and stuff. Dang, this Michaels has these cool cargo bikes with four wheels. This is dope, you just can borrow them when you're here. This company has been around for ages and they are a very highly regarded company in Europe and they've recently broken into the US sphere and their bikes are just fantastic. So for a premium product, you are getting a lot. As you guys know, for me, I do need to carry bikes upstairs. Um, this is a little bit of a heavier bike. It weighs in at about 54 pounds. So typically I was having to take off my pannier bags before I was able to get the bike upstairs. I did it a couple times with the pannier bags on. To be honest, it wasn't super comfortable. So I did start taking off the pannier bags and uh, bringing up the bike separately. I have talked about the look of the bike and how much I think it's like sleek and professional looking, something that like, you know, you would actually want to ride and look good on. Uh, another reason I like that sleek design and you know just really, really refined is because it blends in with other bikes. It doesn't immediately stand out as like, that's a crazy expensive e-bike. Um, so it's nice if you're in an area of high bike theft, which a lot of us are if you're living in cities, um, it's nice to be able to blend in a little bit amongst the other plebeian bikes. <laughs> just kidding, I love all bikes. Another thing about the Gazelle e-bikes in general is that they are pretty accessible for a premium brand. They offer really high-end components, smart designs, and you know Bosch motors for a relatively cheap price when compared to uh, other bikes on the market. So who is this bike for? Honestly, I would say pretty much anybody. Um, the low step frame means it's good for younger and older riders. If you, you know, are a younger person who doesn't like a low step frame, go for a different bike. It does not bother me. Uh, it's really nice when you have gear on the back that you don't have to swing your leg over. I, I, I am totally fine with the low step frame. It's good for male and female riders. They offer three different sizes. Um, I think you can fit a rider at probably five foot two would be my guess, would be the shortest. And then they offer sizes up to an extra large as well. So it fits bigger riders too. It's definitely nice to have the Bosch Performance Line speed motor on there. I 
don't think I would buy a commuter at this point for me personally that doesn't go 28 miles per hour if you're using it specifically for commuting. If you're getting something that's you know more just kind of the cruise around town, it would you know it'd still work, the class one bike. But this bike having the class three speeds really worked well for me when I was trying to get from place to place. You're probably noticing a pattern with these life on an e-bike uh, videos that generally speaking, I do enjoy the ride most of the bikes that I am on. Um, that's no accident, I wanna ride good bikes. <laughs> so, and I wanna give you guys less of a review and more of the realistic experience of riding on a premium e-bike for a couple weeks. So if you wanna to continue to see what it's like to live life on an e-bike, make sure to subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below letting me know which bike you would like to see. We'll see you next time.